Ladies and gentlemen, Joey Wilson of the Reunited Skyler Drive! Yeah, hell yeah! Dude, thank you so much for coming on and doing this. Yourself and Corey are the two, uh, all, the only two gentlemen I have not had the pleasure to speak with. Uh, I appreciate you, sir. Uh, really quick, if you could, yeah, if you could uh, please properly introduce yourself. Let us know, A, what it's like to be back with the, with the OG lineup. Whereabouts in the world you are, and uh, plug anything you'd like, sir. Dude, for sure. So, I mean, my name is Joey Wilson. I play guitar in Skyler Drive. You know, I had a little break there in between, but I mean, I think it feels fucking great to be back, dude. It's like I feel like I'm 18 years old again, which is crazy. I'm 33, so I feel a little younger. I'm like, I feel less sore in the morning for some reason now that I'm <laughs> back in the band. You know, I think it's kind of tricking my brain, but um. Yeah, and I live in Citrus Heights, California. So this is like, like a suburb of Sacramento. So I'm still pretty much close to the area I've always been in. Okay, cool. What When we had Jordan on yesterday, he said in so many words, he kind of had chills from uh, when, when you guys all hung out like two weeks ago. I think he said it was like two or three weeks ago or something like that. What was it like yeah. when when you see... I mean, you guys are still friends, but when when, hey, we're about to, we're about to do this. We're about to have our first practice in a really long time, like... What, what were you feeling? I was nervous, dude, kind of. So, like, I had we had jammed one time um, before Jordan had came out. So I had a few weeks ago seen all the dudes in practice. And, I mean, even that was, like, the most amazing. It felt like we never stopped, like, practicing together all these years, right? But then when Jordan came, it was, like, I was, like, good nervous. Like, when you're going to meet a girl for the first time, like, that kind of weird feeling you got where you're, like, I'm nervous, but I'm super excited. I hope this goes well, you know? And we hadn't seen Jordan in years, but we kept in contact with him. And, dude, it was just, like, I don't know. It was so much fun. Like, the second everyone got there kind of around the same time, it was just, like, everyone gave hugs. Just, you know, we started partying a little and then just got to play music. And it was just, like... I don't know. Like probably the best day I've had in a long time, man. It was awesome. I imagine that that is cool. So you guys are running through the set, yeah. and, and then uh, he he kind of told us that there's a lot of book stuff that you guys just kind of let the promoters announce it at times when it's ready. We're here, we're there, blah blah blah. Um, what's it like to get back on the yeah. road with the lineup from 15 years ago? That's gotta that's gotta feel awesome. Like you said, kind of like your kids all over again yeah i mean it's a it's a great feeling man and there there are some there are things booked we just can't say it yet you know so we kind of have an idea of what we're doing and it's just so exciting like the first show back we have i believe is the um south by so what festival mike mike zimmer's putting on mm -hmm. and just that alone we've played that so many times way back like 10 12 years ago we're playing that you know and so just to like imagine myself going back to Texas to go do this, I don't know. It's just a really good feeling. It's because we've all felt it, but it's been so long. It's just like, I don't know, it's new again, you know, gets me re-fired up. That is awesome. Uh, there's a couple of there's a couple of questions from earlier in the stream that I, I don't remember all of them, but I want to ask a couple of them. Somebody specifically asked if yeah. if 238 will ever get a professional recording <laughs> release. Oh, uh, get out of here with that. <laughs> now, um, we we had a semi-professional recording of it done. I think we did it at Deathbot, where we our first songs we ever put out on uh, like MySpace and Pure Volume back in the day. Um, did it Deathbot? Like we did Drown the City, Two Thirty Eight. We did a whole bunch of songs. I think you could you used to be able to download them as demo versions that we had, but I mean. To be honest with you, that wasn't that song was tight, but it wasn't like as cracking as the other ones. That's why I didn't make the make the EP, you know. Makes but sense. Never say never. I guess we could always do it. Yeah. In the in the downtime in between uh, Jags leaving and Jordan's uh, coming back, what have you been up to in between the time? Dude, uh, I mean, I guess a lot. Dude, that's like a huge. That's like years in there you know so for me because i left in 2012 13 somewhere around there and it's 2022 now so it's been a minute but um i mean just to sum it up real quick i you know i went to college for a while 
I, you know, been working jobs. I'm engaged. I have a kid. I mean, buying a house soon. So there's been a lot of stuff going on. But in that meantime, I did put out a record with Corey called Avant Garde. The record was titled Firewalk with me. And then I joined up with a band called Merchants who had already put out an EP and done some touring. And I recorded a couple songs with them that we put up as well. Um, right before COVID happened, we actually did a tour. So we were starting to gain some traction, had shows booked, and COVID kind of took the rug out from underneath that. But I still play with those guys. It's just not it's not full time or anything, you know. Is Corey still involved in Avant Garde, or is that just kind of a side project and it comes about when it comes about? Yeah, I mean, it's just it's kind of just a one off. We we really just wanted to do a record and play a couple shows and stuff. And I mean, I'm always down to record music with Corey by myself or whoever wants to, you know. So I wouldn't say that's like completely done, but. For now, it's just hiatus, you know. We did a record. That's kind of us becoming friends again. We hadn't talked in a few years. And I actually ran into him at a Chili's in Elk Grove and hit him up later. I was like, dude, come over. Let's jam. I live down the street from you now, you know. Oh, that's and cool. And then uh, from there, just been best friends for like eight years again since then. Yeah. When, when we talked to uh, Brian and Nick and, and Jordan separately on a different occasion, they always reference, I, I asked them like, hey, when you guys went on tour back in the day, like what was your favorite stop just regarding touring with Jordan? And he's, they all specifically referenced the double decker tour bus with Dance Gavin Dance. Do you, do you have any oh, funny dude. stories that you can share with us regarding that particular tour? The, oh man, that tour? Uh, yeah, Kyle Simmons shit in a pizza box at a construction site. That's the first thing that comes to mind because <laughs> there was no bathroom on that bus. Um, <laughs> I do remember. Um, so that double decker bus was pretty tight quarters, right? Like, like eighteen bunks upstairs. Okay, so it's real tight. It's real packed. And when you're 18? on tour, there's not a lot of dudes are showering. Yeah, there was like 18, because I mean, just Dance Gavin and us, that's already like 12, 13, and we had like Tex, tour manager, you know, there's tons that's a of a lot of spots there. on so a bus, small, though, I, I was thinking. It was like a coffin, bro. It was so small. And a lot of dudes, including myself, bro, were not showering that much and playing shows, you know? Mm -hmm. And when you get that many dudes up in this little room, bro, it was so rough. Like, we'd all be, like, dreading going to bed, bro. Everyone just smelled so bad up there. And everyone's dirty clothes were in their bunks and shit, you know? So that, too, were a lot of, like, the poo thing. With, it's just, like, stinky in my subconscious, <laughs> I guess. But you couldn't even walk, dude. You had to, like, bend down when you're, like, trying to make food and shit. It was a mess. And the tour bus driver was fucking he was crazy too so it is overall made for just a really good environment i think to be in cool um i imagine no obviously no wires or anything beyond wires stuff will be played but i did ask jordan that if he'd ever be interested in that down the road like let's say the fan response is just overwhelmingly awesome and you guys are you know go on the next thing and the next thing beyond just the the stuff you have booked right now with one-off shows. He he said that he's demoed a lot of stuff for for wires. Uh, is there ever a chance? Hey, I'm new here. Is there ever a chance that we could hear some of that demo stuff, or do you anticipate this leading to a new EP? Um. Yeah, I put a pin in everything after Jordan. I, that's never going to get touched in my in my book you know um jordan did demo some stuff i think we played wires with him live one time before he left the band that was like the new song on the tour we were working on mm -hmm. but i mean other people recorded it and worked on it and he didn't so i just i don't think that's that's right in my book but there there will be new music i guarantee we're gonna start writing music soon okay so it's not been written yet is what I guess ultimately I'm asking. There's no. Uh, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to talk about it too much. There's, I got st you. there's stuff in the works. Okay. There's stuff going on. Cool. Yeah. We got. We got. We're, we're gonna be juiced up. I see you. Of of the original, yeah. she watched the sky EP. Which one stands out to you as your personal favorite? I knew you were gonna ask this, and earlier when I was just like, I was doing my looks in the mirror, like trying to get it right for this podcast. I was thinking about that, and I was like, which song? I don't, dude. I mean, okay. Ability was just like the most fun intro to ever play because you just came out and it's super heavy. And we had a lot of guest vocalists over the years do that as well with us. So 
that's a fun one. But I think personally for me, I have to say Nightmare, dude. Nightmare is my favorite song to play off that record. And I'm a huge video game nerd, and that song's based off Soul Calibur, the character Nightmare. I mean, Jordan played that growing up together all the time, so that one hits pretty close to home. And it's just so much fun to play live. I don't know, just the, the screaming right away intro part. Yeah, super it's fun. It's my favorite from from the EP for sure. Do, do you anticipate any of the? Is it? Yeah. Do, do you anticipate any any of the hypothetically called "She Watched the Sky" part two, incorporating more Soul Caliber stuff, or is that kind of just a one time thing? I mean, dude. I mean, if you. I would say I wouldn't put it past us because I just love video game influencing. It's like that whole Wires record is like literally you could play Final Fantasy X and the second you put in the disc, you're like, oh, that's the Sky the Drive lyrics, you know? So I think that, I don't know, man. And, and Jordan writes the music. Jordan's going to write the vocals, not me. But I'm sure we're going to touch base on, you know, we'll make it neutral, right? It's new but retro. So I think we'll just kind of bounce back to a few things that really clicked with us during the She Watched the Sky writing process. And I'm sure it'll just flow into the new one. As as a gamer, what's the best video game ever made? Final Fantasy Seven. Oh, I, but... I totally agree. That's my favorite Final Fan that's my favorite Final Fantasy. It's not my favorite game, but it's my top three favorite games ever. And it's definitely the best Final it... Fantasy. Okay, dude, it's that one. I have a Shiva tattoo on the front of my arm, and then I have a Triforce on my hand. So I would say the next best game is it's got to be Ocarina of Time as well for Legend of Zelda. But the most like fun I ever had playing a Final Fantasy game might have been the newest one, the Seven Remake. Dude, it was like mind blowing how much fun I had. You know, I'm an Xbox guy, so I'm I'm forever waiting. Oh. I know. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. That shit, man. That's okay. <laughs> I have to ask a semi rough question. Uh, we yeah, we're we're kind of aware of the behind the scenes drama regarding copyrights and and all that stuff. Do you anticipate any backlash from the band reusing the Skylet Drive name, or maybe possibly having to go by original Skylet Drive as the official new name? Honestly, dude, that's not really, that's not my ballpark, man. That has to do with like managers and stuff. And if I don't, I don't really, I don't really understand any of that when it comes to laws or anything. So I can't really, I don't know. If someone tells me it works, it works. Someone tells me it doesn't, then we got to do something else. That's as far as I know. Fair enough. I'm, I'm in the same boat. I don't know how any of that yeah. law stuff works. So just, cool. I don't want to sound like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I, mean, I don't, you know, <laughs> so for sure. Uh, have you kept up with with Brian yeah. and and Nick throughout the years? Uh, since when you when you walked away, were you still close with those guys, or did it kind of re? Yeah, dude, things were. I'm sorry. Uh, I get what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I've always been close to them, like in my heart. But there was a minute where like I didn't really talk to a lot of the dudes. But I mean, it's been years and years and years, dude. We've we've been talking and hanging out again, you know. So. For me, it was like, yeah, I left the band. I had some shit I needed to deal with personally as well and needed to work on. So, like, everyone still hit me up. We were cool. You know, I was just kind of doing my own thing for a year or two. And then after that, it was like, dude, we were still hanging out and partying, you know? That's awesome. Uh, last time we had Brian yeah. on, he challenged me to a, a beer chug off, and he absolutely slaughtered me. Have you ever beaten Brian oh, in dude. any form of chug chug beer competition? I don't think anyone's ever beaten <laughs> Brian, dude, in a beer chug. And you know what's crazy is I he moved down to San Diego, uh, you know, for a while. I was in school and everything. And I, my brother in law is in the band of Mice and Men, and he was telling me that he met a guy in San Diego who was telling him he went to this bar and a guy chugged a beer faster than anyone he's ever seen in his life. And the guy was like, "What bar?" And my brother-in-law was like what bar is it and the guy told him and it happened to be the brian at that bar what dude. the f so people that didn't even know each other in san diego bro it We're got back to me how fast he could chug a beer it's amazing the man the man's known so, for being a badass yeah. uh guitarist screamer and beer chugger that's that's awesome that, oh, go, dude, that goes I, in the gravestone i, I <laughs> 
I'd put him in like an Olympic pool, dude, and bet on him and be like, I don't think anyone's going to beat him. It's fast, bro. Fast. Yeah, when, when I went up against him, he just went, done. Like that, like done. I was like, and oh. he probably he probably hadn't even done it in years, dude, and still just re- muscle memory, you know, right back. Hell yeah. Uh, Joey, if you're, if you're on Netflix or Hulu or whatever streaming service, what are you addicted to right now? What are you binge watching? Uh, dude, I almost said horror porn for some reason right away. I don't know why that would be on Netflix, (laughs) but, um, I was going to say food porn and horror movies. So like I'm obsessed with anything street food related, anything Gordon Ramsay related and horror films. Right. So I would say that. Just the last night, I spent like four hours watching the Midnight Asia documentary series. Have you seen that yet? No, I've never even heard of it. Is it creepy? Dude, it just dropped. And it, no, no, it's more like, I mean, it could be. depends on what your idea of creepy is. But it goes into like nightlife and Asian cities and like how weird it gets, but also how like cool and positive it is at the same time, right? So there's some weird, it gets into some weird creepy stuff sometimes for what goes on. But it's just more like, I don't know. It just goes into like food and partying, dude. And those are like some of my favorite things, you know? I can dig that for sure. <laughs> yeah. <And> when <laughs> when it when it's time to record some of the new stuff, do you anticipate going back to Kit? Or do you have your eyes set on a, a different producer or is that just kind of label stuff that they figure out? Well, we're we're technically not on a label. So I would say like, like guess, dude, I would say we're just going to record it ourselves. I would have no reservations to go back to Kit Walters. I think that dude's brilliant. Everyone we worked with, even like for wires, Mitch and Al. So, and we worked with Mitch again later on in the future too. I mean, everyone we worked with always rocked pretty hard, but I think that all the knowledge that we have now from all of us recording for so many years and with Nick being a great engineer and producer as he is now I think we could just knock it out ourselves, man. I think we could do it close to home and it'd be just as good. Hell yeah, very cool. We've gotten most of the bulk yeah. of the the hard stuff out of the way. Let's have a little fun. Are you down to do some trivia and cool. and or review some bands with us? Yeah, of course. Let's go. Cool. So some of these we don't know ahead of time what they're going to sound like, what genre. Could be anything. Could be country, rap, metal. We don't know. Okay. Um, so here we go with the first one. Doc Native Ooh. with Dream. Anything that like bangs like that when it starts, I'm into. And I think the band looks tight. They kind of look like a, they almost look like how we did back in the day. They all got long hair and shit. You know the one whose hair wasn't straightened? That dude's metal as fuck in his soul. And that's why he's tapping so hard. You know, <laughs> he shreds, dude. That guy's good. He's What's, good. You could tell. Great taps. What do you listen to in your personal time that we wouldn't expect you to listen to? shit that you wouldn't expect um dude everyone's gonna kill me for this but i i when i so i work at fedex right so i'm always listening to music i'm like driving around and shit i listen to a lot of like k like k rock and japanese rock bands dude because the melodies are so fucking catchy i was actually sending nick a song the other day and i was like listen to how catchy these courses are dude got to draw some inspiration from this you know but i mean like my favorite bands bring me the horizon that's probably pretty typical right listen to a ton of mice um die antwoord's been a huge one for me um main a huge one for me as well listen to ghost main a ton but um i don't know something you wouldn't expect i'd have to say like the the japanese korean rock shit is probably not something you'd pin me for like like baby metal or am i completely in the wrong ballpark like because I have a couple examples of locals that, that we play that are, I think, what you're talking about. Like Elysium from Japan yeah. kind of comes to mind. Joy, what's regarding the OG lineup, is there a absolute worst, worst gig experience story ever that you could that you could let us know about? Maybe like everything just went wrong at this particular show. The sound was off, you couldn't hear something and any any kind of story or in general just what is your worst gig story so for me dude it's hard because if anyone paid to show up dude i don't never want to say it was bad but that being said i have two really weird ones i'll share with you one of them was in condon oregon 
okay now we are playing in like portland and bend and some other places around there right before that and we told people we're playing in condon oregon it's our first tour we've ever gone on and the headlining band dropped off so that was the whole package us and them they dropped off after the first show all the promoters weren't sure if we were even playing half of them were canceled half of them weren't we didn't even know sometimes we'd have to call and see if the show was even on on the way there and we're out middle of nowhere Everyone in Portland's all, uh, Condon, Oregon is not around here, dude. And we're like, oh, it says it's like two, three hours away. They're like, we've never heard of it. It's a town, dude, that literally had, I'm not exaggerating. I think the population was like 70 people. And it was no cell phone service, no internet, nothing, right? And this girl, bless her heart, really nice girl. She put on the show at this theater and the whole town came out to it. It was like a town event, right? Oh, that's awesome. And But this and, is a bad dude, story. I sold more merch <laughs> there. More merch there than we ever did. But it was just really strange because we are going through a town and they were like, there's three people at the high school. And I was like, bro, we're going to get murdered out here. Like, this is crazy, <laughs> right? And thinking back, that band, actually, the headline band might have ended up being on that show. I can't remember. But um, very first beginning part of the song, we're on the stage in the theater. It sounds a little wonky. You know, it's not the most like 100% great venue you've ever been to. The second the song starts, I throw my guitar around me and my whole strap breaks off and guitar flies across the stage. That was like the first instance of what I got on stage, right? But I mean, that was a really strange one. But see, it's kind of bad in like a show sense, but then it turns out being like a great memory for me because we had a great time. The next one is at, I think, somewhere by like Ohio, maybe. I'm probably wrong. Brian would remember this, not me, where it was. But we played a karate dojo. And we showed up late because they were like, are you guys playing? And we're like, we heard the show's canceled. So we drove all the way there. I think it was just the band members and their girlfriends. And so we hauled ass all the way there. We get to this karate dojo and the match are like coming up off of it. And the room's like a 12 by 12. That's like what the venue was set up in the back. And then this guy, super cool guy, I think he's had too much to drink, invited us to stay the night in his tattoo shop next door. And it is just like overall really weird experience, dude. <laughs> it's bad. You did know? you get like any I tattoos? Kind of weird. I think he, did you get any tattoos from the guy? No, but randomly, no, he was blacked out, bro, and kept telling us he used to be in like um, in Cradle of Filth. He was like, oh, I was a drummer in Cradle of Filth, and we're like, No, nah, you weren't, bro. <laughs> I don't think you were. And he had a he had like a machine in there, and we're all hanging out, and randomly he pulls out a BB gun and shoots Brian in the face with it. And we were like, what the fuck's going on? It was just real weird, dude. It was just a weird vibe, you know? But, I mean, other than that, I think – I'm sure there's some other weird ones out there. Those are just the two that come to mind. That is a odd thing to do in the middle of the night is just pop some in the face with a BB gun. I'm sure Brian was quite pissed off about that. Um, a fan question coming I in. I don't think he was happy. Yeah, I don't think so. A yeah. uh, fan question coming in in chat. <laughs> uh, being that Kyle's basically not involved – anymore whatsoever is do you inc plan on incorporating any form of keyboards or orchestral parts in the new stuff yeah yeah oh like in like in new music and as far as in the new music and i guess two-part question as far as maybe are you going to do like samples or triggers to play that those parts for the old stuff or is it just how do you guys think you're going to go yeah, about that so It'll be, yeah, it'll be backtracked, right? So it'll be paired up with the click track and Corey's ear and we'll have piano parts in there because we're not going to have, you know, we're not going to bring a piano for, you know, the parts that, like intro, middle parts, you can really hear. We'll just play that over the PA, you know? And as far as new music, dude, I mean, most of us in the band have been playing piano for years and we all write and record music and we can all jam. So I think that, 1000 percent we will have synth and piano parts in the new songs yeah cool looks like the kind of guy that may only gets drunk when you go to a sushi restaurant you know what i mean but i feel like he's the nicest guy on earth you know that's funny but i i i love his vibe the video is super look at that drone footage with all those cars and then he pulls out some break dancing moves bro this guy doesn't give a fuck he's like <laughs> i'm just gonna do it all in this one video i'm gonna show everyone what i got you know and i mean the earrings and the ponytail like he looks like someone you you want to be hanging out with is what i would think you know and i think it's time i mean necessarily it's not 100 percent my cup of tea but what he's doing is good i can't do that shit you know and I can't by the it. looks of this budgie he has people like it you know so that's sick yeah, it's pretty Respect. tight. 
Joy, my last question for yeah, you, sir, sick. is uh, who who made you when you were younger want to be you? Who made you want to pick up guitar and and be in a band? Like, who did you jam when you were younger and you were like, I, I, that's it, I gotta, I gotta play. There's a couple parts to that. So I would say, percent Blink One Eighty Two was the reason I wanted to play punk rock music and. Growing up, I was in pop punk bands and punk bands and stuff, and that led into like more of the, then you know, hardcore kind of music, post hardcore screamo stuff. But I would say Blink One Eighty Two, dude. Nirvana was a huge one. I got tab books for Christmas before I could even play guitar. They just bought me a guitar, and then my sister's friends, three years older than me, they were in bands from Lodi High School, like like they're called like Destined and um man overboard there's a bunch of bands they taught me how to play guitar coming over to hang out with my sister they'd show me power chords and how to read tabs and that was it bro once i could learn to read, ta read tabs it was like brian we're starting a fucking band we don't even know a drummer we're going to convince our other friend to learn drums and get his parents to buy it you know and then like was that cory we got into high school was that cory you convinced cory's parents or was that some other guy? No, it was our friend Bobby. Okay. <laughs> Robert Anthony Thiok, a.k.a. Bob Scone, dude. And <laughs> our eighth our eighth grade talent show, we played Damn It, dude. And that would have been in like 2001, right? Yeah, 2001. We played Damn It. And that was my first time. I was like, dude, girls dig musicians. I was like, we weren't cool before, dude. But we're cool now, you know, since we played a song at the talent show. I think that it's extrapolated, you know, for the rest of my life, that type of vibe. But um, definitely the young pop, dude, Newfound Glory, Phoenix TX, um, Alistair, like just any MXPX, AFI, like all those bands just on repeat, dude, growing up, you know, and then Linkin Park. And that's where that's where it changed. One bit. one final question to go off what you just said. Did you ever get to play with any of those punk bands uh, in your in your Warp Tour days? Did you ever get to hang with Alistair or, or Phoenix TX or any of them? I imagine Newfound Dude, probably honestly, did a did some warp tours with you guys. Honestly, the the big pop punk bands, I mean, we did um okay, Atari's. I we used to cover Atari songs and my first warp tour in 09, the first day at catering, me and Brian were standing behind the singer of the Atari's and I was like, "Holy shit, dude, that's the singer of the Atari's." We used to see him at warp tour in like 8th grade, you know. Um big pop we played with um like Anti Flag was a huge one. Rancid, we did a whole year with Rancid on Warp Tour. Um, I'm trying to think. Honestly, like I played with a ton of my favorite bands. Like while we in like Thrice, all these bands we were touring, but I never got to do any like Blink. We missed the Angels and Airwaves year in between our Warp tours, which bummed me out. We missed the Newfound Glory year, I think, as well in between. So I was really close to a lot of those, but I mean. I can't complain, complain, dude. You know, played like 50 shows with AFI and, or not AFI, sorry, like Rancid and Anti Flag. So, I mean, I'm happy. You still had a hell of a good time. I love it. Hell yeah. Well, oh, Joey, yeah, definitely. I, uh, I appreciate you taking some time out of your day to do this. We're, we're so excited. The, the boys are back together. And, uh, Jordan told us Corey is the rustiest of the group. So stay on him. That's a joke, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> But uh, for real, uh, we can't wait yeah. to, to the So What Festival and then all the other all the gigs and, and little mini runs or whatever's going to come out comes out. I'm excited. Please come to Southern California. Yeah. Let me know if you do. I'm, I'll bring a small army with me to support. But, uh, dude, we wish you guys nothing all but right. success in 2022. We're so excited. The band's back together. And, uh, man, this is awesome. It's awesome, dude. We appreciate you. Uh, dude, I'm stoked, man. And you're in SoCal, so you'll you'll be happy soon, bro. You'll be happy soon enough. I heard there's something Hollywood related, but that's all I'm allowed to know. <laughs> it might be, it might not be, dude. It, you'll know though. All you'll, right, you'll cool. See it. You're all you got all will see it. Hell yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Joey Wilson of the re Joey Wilson, excuse me, of the reunited Escala Drive. Thank you, sir. Enjoy the rest of your day and stay safe when you play those gigs, brother. We appreciate you. Give me a hell yeah. I will. I love you guys. And thank you so much for having me on. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it so much.